And so that morning, I was wondering, okay, am I going to get to meet Pope Francis or not? And I kind of had the feeling that I, I wasn't going to. Just a few in our group were going to really have the handshake with him, what they call the Baccio Mano, which you, you've done that? You've done that, Mark. Yes, it's a special time, a special thing. And uh, so that morning in my morning devotion, uh, this, this was literally, I took a picture of my phone, which was on my phone. I was reading Psalm 105, and, the, and Psalm 105, verse 4 and 5, Verses 3 and 4, I mean. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His presence continually. Seek God's presence continually. It doesn't say seek Pope Francis's presence continually. So I thought, okay, this is a word from God for me. I'm not going to meet Pope Francis today, but I'm always in God's presence, and that was the best thing. And that's the message for all of you. You and I might not ever shake hands with Pope Francis, but, um, but we're in the God's presence forever. So there at the gathering at the Vatican that morning, um, and Grant, I'll just ask you to, to just go through these slides. There I am pointing to him. There's Pope Francis. You can go slow down a little bit, and uh, <laughs> and then the, the large audience there. This is a ticket that we had for the seats. That were right. In, you can stop on this one, and then Pope Francis is seated in the chair, kind of in the middle of the slide, in our group there. Uh, so and then afterward. You can stop on that for a moment, Grant. Um, everybody knows the framed art piece that we gave to him, the cartoon by my friend, Joe Heller, and I'll show that in a minute. We also, that paper that um, Eric is holding that he gave to Pope Francis is, uh, was, has a, had something to do with the Supreme Court, um, and I'll show you that here. Well, this is the, the cartoon. I break for the poor. Heaven can wait, don't text and drive. My other car is a Pope mobile. Um, have you hugged an atheist today? So this is from uh, Mark and I. I'm going to give you a copy of this. Yeah, uh, this is from my friend. Okay, my friend Joe Heller from Green Bay, and he posted this on Facebook. But Joe Heller was so proud of that. Yep, that's my Pope Francis cartoon about to be handed over to His Holiness. So, and then Stacy wrote the news release for that. So thank you for doing that. This was the uh, document that we presented to Pope Francis, and uh, it was uh, something for the Supreme Court. And at the bottom, at the end of that document, I want to see, show you who has also signed this document, Ascension Lutheran Church. A letter from our Synod Bishop, um, Guy Irwin. It was a beautiful letter. I wish I could read the whole thing to you. I'll, I'll make copies of it, actually, so you can have it as well. The Jubilee Banner that, and this is Ascension's Jubilee Banner that I brought back with me. And this is the red greeting card that some of you signed for Pope Francis. Pope Francis said, being Christian means being in Christ, thinking like him, acting like him, loving like him. We need to be receiving antennas that are tuned into the Word of God in order to become broadcasting antennas. So the next day I took a tour called In the Footsteps of Paul to see where in Rome he was imprisoned, later beheaded, as tradition, one tradition tells us, and then buried. This is St. Paul's Basilica. And right next to the uh, Roman Forum is this, in the Roman Road, is this prison where they believe Peter and Paul were kept down in this little kind of like dungeon. And this fresco, which I'll explain right now. This fresco, they think, is dated from the 11th or 12th century. And up until four years ago today, it was just the archaeologists kind of uncovered it. It was four years ago this day and um, in this prison. And so who, who is this? It's Jesus on the left and Peter on the right. And the one thing I want you to notice, look on Peter's left shoulder. See that right there? You know what that is? Jesus has his arms around Peter 
and you see Jesus' fingers on Peter's shoulder. Uh, Jesus is standing by Peter here. Remember that phrase? And, uh, okay, so we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later again, too. Inside the prison, where the prisoners were kept before they were executed, in that dark, damp prison. But the Lord stood by me. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. Now, now we're going to the Abbey of the Three Fountains. The Abbey of the Three Fountains here. And this is where tradition has it that Paul was in prison in this place, walked this Roman road to, and inside that sanctuary then is the place where it's remembered where Paul was beheaded, according to one tradition. And as you can see this sanctuary, you can see that it goes down, one, two, three, and I hate to be this graphic of the children here, but they, the tradition, I didn't even know this tradition until I heard it here, but the tradition is that Paul was beheaded, and when he was beheaded, his head bounced three times, and every place, and every place through the three places it bounced, water gushed up. That's the tradition that they tell in Rome here. So I'm, I'm just repeating what I heard. Okay. There's the water running underneath. This is St. Saint, Saint Paul's Basilica. And then we go to inside St. Paul's Basilica. And of course, tradition has it this is where then Paul is buried. Grant, I'm going to have you advance the slide. There we go. Where he's buried, the next slide. St. Paul, and St. Paul is always pictured with a cross as the symbol of the Word of God. Uh, what's St. What's Peter symbolized by? The keys, keys, right? That's one of them, the keys, and, the, and Paul with the sword. So this is the Vatican, um, and then the, the, you see St. Paul is in the upper center, the, the, the gathering area on the left, and then the lower portion represents the Vatican, uh, the Vatican Museum and so forth. The next slide. Here I'm doing my best imitation of Rick Steves. <laughs> at the Vatican. Inside the, the world's, world's largest church, uh, the next slide is you see the, the altar, and then underneath the altar is where St. Peter is buried there. Next slide. Just, and then I did one day in the CC, two hour train ride north, went to a CC to see the, next slide, the Basilica of St. Francis. There, and it's a very beautiful basilica. One more slide of that place. And then one more slide of, you can hold, of St. Francis following our Lord Jesus. And the next one is me next to St. Francis. Um, standing next to St. Francis. Guess I got my arm on him, don't I, this time? Okay, and, and the next, that night the Lord stood near him and said, keep up your courage. And so as we look at these last slides, I want you to, can you hold the second grant? And just, I want all of you to put your place in the place of St. Peter. That you're in that fresco, you're in that painting. In reality, that's you this day. That Jesus is standing next to you. And Jesus has his arm around your shoulder. And he's got his four fingers on your shoulder there. And he's standing next to you. And he's giving you these words of encouragement. That night, the Lord stood near him stood near you and said to you, keep up your courage. Are any of you here this day who need the words, the word of the Lord saying to you this day, keep up your courage, keep your faith in him because he is with you, he's next to you, he's standing there, he's got his arm around you. Next slide. Can we say with Paul, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Next slide. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength. That's from 2 Peter 4, 17. That's, in a, that's one of our readings today. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength. The next one. Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from our first reading today. And if you're going to hold on this slide, I'll just say, put your own name into this 
into Jesus' words. Put your name in and say, and Jesus says to you this day, do you love me? And Jesus asks all of us three times this day, do you love me? And what does he tell all of us to do? He says to all of us, feed my sheep, tend my lambs, feed my sheep. And then he says, follow me. And the very last word that Jesus says to, to Peter in John 21, in John, is these two words, follow me. What are the very first words that Jesus says to Peter in Mark's gospel? And Mark, by the way, is, was kind of, uh, did you know that Peter was telling Mark? It's kind of like, it's Peter's gospel. How do I say that? That Peter was behind Mark's writing for Mark's gospel? So the very first words that Jesus says to Peter in Mark's gospel is, follow me. The very last words in John's gospel, Jesus says, follow me. Next slide. Frederick Buechner, is, I think he's a Presbyterian pastor and author and writer, says, reflecting on his development of his faith over the years, he writes, I have always trusted God with my life. The change is that now I begin at least to trust God with my death. And I think that's what Peter and Paul both teach us, is that they trusted God with their life, and they trusted God with their death as well. And so finally, repeating again St. Augustine, both apostles share the same feast day, for these two were one. And even though they suffered on different days, they were as one. Peter went first and Paul followed. And so we celebrate this day made holy for us by the apostles' blood. Let us embrace what they believe, their life, their labors, their suffering, their preaching, and their confession of faith. We'll close with that last slide. There you are again. And Jesus is next to you. And uh, so take that word from God to heart this day, that Jesus is standing next to you, is with you, and he's got his arms around you. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.